Welcome to the Reflections Cast, where we invite you to join us in an exploration of the teachings of our dad, Skip Ross. In each episode, we will listen to a talk or lecture from Skip and then discuss what we might be able to apply to our daily lives and reflect on how they can inspire us to grow and change. We hope to continue his legacy and join our listeners in finding new insights and perspectives. Here's episode 13, Write It Down. Well, hey, everyone, welcome to another episode of the Reflections Cast. Hope you had a great last week. And as always, I'm Stephen. And I'm Melody. And we have another great show for you today. Uh, This is going to be all about writing those goals down. And that is something that was super important to dad. uh, Something he talked about constantly in his seminars, the power of that physical expression of those goals. So I can't wait to get into it. But briefly, before we do, just wanted to reiterate that we've been going through this goal setting series with Skip for a number of weeks now, honestly, a lot longer (laughs) than I expected to go on. But hey, you know what? I'm getting a lot out of it. I think our listeners are too. Yep. Are you getting a lot out of it, Melody? (laughs) Absolutely. We are going to be goal setting ninjas by the time we're done with this series here. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, and so I think we're going to we're going to keep on going until this incomplete lesson has been encapsulated at the end. We did just touch on the idea of um, defining it clearly and specifically and the power that comes in that specificity. Uh, so if you missed that episode, take a second, go back to episode 12, because It fits in so perfectly with this episode of writing it down. Uh, And if you have any questions about this episode or the previous episode you want to tell us, uh, you can hit us up on our email at thereflectionscast at gmail.com or head over to our YouTube page. Uh, You can put a comment on this episode and we can respond to it. Or you can leave us a comment on our Spotify channel as well. Uh, You can also actually leave us a voicemail over there. It's a little tricky. Maybe it's only for the techie uh, people out there that are listening. But if you want to get your voice on the podcast, that's the way to do it. So head on over to our Spotify to do that. Uh, But I can hardly wait to get into it. But before we do, there is something of great importance to the podcast, and that is the Pioneer Circle. Melody, could you tell us a little bit about the Pioneer Circle for everyone who is obviously very curious at home as to what that thing is? Yeah, absolutely. You guys, I know we talk about the Pioneer Circle every week, but it's because (laughs) it's a really important part of the future of Circle A. And it's just an opportunity for families either connected with Circle A or families who are looking for some great, encouraging content and community for their middle school and high school students to connect and to receive some of the best that we've learned from the years of at Circle A, some of the best that we've learned from Skip, and a lot of the best that we've learned from each other. It's been really awesome to have our leadership team from generations, it feels like, coming back and being a part of the Pioneer Circle and contributing messages and teachings about so many important topics that are just really so important for a middle school and high school student students to learn about as they are being formed in these years. Um, and so I just I just love hearing from some of my mentors and my heroes on a daily basis with these encouraging thoughts and lessons. So it's really, really awesome. If you haven't checked it out yet, I would really recommend it um, really for anybody. It doesn't you don't even have to be somebody with a middle school or high school student. We've got all different kinds of people involved in the Pioneer Circle and getting these great daily messages. So we would love to have you. And we've also got our app and our coaching calls that just kind of bring that community even closer together. Absolutely. This is the episode where I think it perfectly merges with the need for that app. And if you want to get connected with that, get on Pioneer Circle, guys. Now, one more time, Melody, where can they find more information about Pioneer Circle? Well, you can go to circleacamp.com slash pioneers. 
Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I'm telling you, this is this is the lesson. If you enjoy what we're doing on the podcast, you enjoy these lessons. It is so motivating to not just, you know, have this podcast come into your, your podcast feed every once in a while, but to be daily uh, immersed in some of these concepts and ideas. It just makes all the difference. So get on it. Head on over there to Pioneer Circle and see what they've got available for you. But right now, we're going to get into a time with Skip, a very awesome little segment about writing the goals down. <laughs> so let's throw it over to Skip. Here's letter C. Write it down. I have said that so many times in these 45 years or so that I've been teaching on this subject and reading, practicing this subject, write it down. I suggest a three by five card. Why a three by five card? Because it's convenient and easy to put in a pocket, in a wallet, in a purse, and carry it with you all the time. It's easy to put up on a visor in an automobile. It's just easy. And you can comfortably get about 10 goals on a three by five card, which are the number that most people are confident in working with. If you get more than 10, you sometimes feel overwhelmed. If you get less than 10, you sometimes think it's so easy. You don't need to invest all the time and energy that I'm talking about in this presentation. And so you get lazy and you don't look at it. So you write it down three by five card. Take that three by five card, write down 10 things you want to have happen to you in the next year. Things that have to do with your personal life, have to do with your spiritual life, have to do with your social life, have to do with your physical life, have to do with your mental life, have to do with your vocational or business life. Just establish some goals in each of those six major areas of life. Someone said to me, years ago was it does it have to be something from each of the six or could i have all 10 in just one be my guest (laughs) there's nothing magic about this process here it's it's wherever you have an interest to develop and to grow and to accomplish things if all six are in or if all 10 are in one area of your life then so be it but i think balance is better and so i would encourage you, as I do myself, to establish those goals in the six major areas of life. One apiece with a few extra in one or two seems to be a good balance to keep us thinking and moving in the balance part of dynamic living. So you write it down. First time I heard it, I remember the guy. I could give you his name. I'm not going to. Not because I don't like giving credit to other people. I always want to get credit to other people, except to those that I feel have gone off the deep edge and into the morass of stupidity. (laughs) The last time I heard of this guy, he had his team of researchers in a parking lot of the supermarket asking everybody who came out of the supermarket if they would mind if they check to see the lint in their belly button. So you're not getting his name. (laughs) But I remember who he was, and I remember my first exposure to the whole process of write it down. My thought was, I don't need to write it down. I have a good memory. I don't need to write it down. He said, write it down. I'm a very private person for the most part, and I didn't want to write it down. Somebody might get a hold of my card and see my card, and I don't want to write it down. If I have a good memory, I don't need to write it down. He said, write it down. I said, I don't think it'll make any difference. I mean, what difference could it possibly make if you just write something down? Only people that don't have a good memory would ever need to do that. Only people with 
increasing years would ever need to do that. <laughs> Only people with a fractured attention would ever need to do that. None of those things were true for me. I didn't think it would make any difference writing it down. He said, write it down. I said to him, I don't want to write it down. He said, write it down. I said, if you can show me one good reason why I should write it down, I'll consider it. He said, write it down. If you can give me one reason why it'll make any, write it down. But I write it down. But I write it down. <laughs> I have finally concluded you ought to write it down. I picked up on that. And as I have read through the years, virtually anybody and everybody that I've read who writes or speaks significantly about goal setting says, write it down. There is something involved in the process of physical touch, of visual, of putting pen to paper or pencil to paper that makes a difference. It is more firmly established in the unconscious mind, which is where we want it established. And so you write it down. You write it in the present positive tense as though it is current reality. Far too many people, when, when they think about their goals or they write about their goals, think and write in the future tense. I will. I'm going to. The future is tomorrow, and tomorrow never comes. And unfortunately, the unconscious mind processes things in that way. And so as it has a statement that says, I'm going to, there is no urgency to do, because I am going to. Just not necessarily right now. It's not a current happening. It's a going to happening. It's a, it will happen sometime in the future. And sometime in the future is not clear. It's not specific enough. So you write those things as though they are current reality. I am enjoying driving my new Equus. And some of you say, you're what? <laughs> is that a new horse you got, Skip? <laughs> no. no, it's not a horse. It's a car. It's a very nice car. I've never owned a car that got as many comments as the Equus does. I have people who actually will stop in a parking lot, pull into a parking space, get out of there. Some of them just leave it in the, in the aisle way. Will stop, get out of their car, and come over and ask me, what kind of a car is that? First time Dana saw it, he thought it was a Bentley. He thought I bought a new Bentley. So I said, you're right. <laughs> he says, Skip, what does that have to do with this? Nothing. I just thought about it, so I thought I'd share that with you. <laughs> so you write it down. That the, the point of it was, I am enjoying driving. Now, I really do right now because I do own the Equus. But the statement is a goal-setting statement that is made as a current reality. As much as it is true that I am enjoying driving my Equus right now, that statement needs to be made before I ever have the Equus. I'm excited about straight A's in my high school, in my senior year. I have lots of kids who write that. But see, they might think more in terms of, I'm going to have straight A's next year. That's future. Instead of, I am excited, I'm pleased, I'm enjoying the coursework that's taking me that has produced straight A's in my senior year. That's current reality. So when you're writing your goal statements, think in terms of 
present reality. What would you say about that if it actually did exist? If it was not just a goal, if it was a reality, what is the statement? That's the one you write as the goal-setting statement. Write it down. Three by five card is the best way I know. If you need a four by six card because you got more goals than the average person, it's okay. Eight and a half by, by 11 sheet of paper, it's okay. <laughs> Most of you have probably heard me tell the story of the lady who came to me and she said, Skip, I, um, she said, I have to confess that I get very excited every time I hear you. Um, but she said, you know, it takes about three or four or five months to kind of tell me it's not working for me. She said, I just don't know why it's not working for me. And I, I said to her, I don't, you know, sometimes you just have a feeling about what the answer is. I don't know all the answers, but sometimes I have a feeling and people think I know all the answers. So I said to her, have you ever written it down? She said, well, not quite. I said, what do you mean not quite? She said, well, not really. I said, how many times have you heard me speak? She said, I don't know, I've been probably in nine of your seminars. And I said, do you have the Dynamic Living Series? She said, yes. I said, have you listened to the Dynamic Living Series? She said, yes. I said, how many times? She said, five times. I said, in all those times of listening to me on CD or in person, have you ever heard me say, write it down? She said, as a matter of fact, every time I've ever heard you speak, you said, write it down. I said, then help me with this. Why is it that you've never written it down? She said, I've never had a three by five card in front of me when you said that. I said, rip the shirt collar off the guy in front of you. I don't care what you write it on, write it down. She said, oh, okay. It seems so obvious to me, but sometimes it takes a little bit more to get through, to say this really is important. It's a crucial step of the process of goal setting. All right, so we're going to end it there. But that was our time with Skip. I hope you guys got some great notes out of it. I know I did. Um, but we've got a quick summary that we want to go over before we get into some questions revolving around this, because I think that he definitely leaves, leaves this particular lesson open for some more questions and some more specificity and clarity. So we're going to get into it. But before we do, Melody, could you just give us some of your thoughts and, and a summary of of what dad talked about in this last episode. For sure. This was another great one. Another opportunity to just slow down and think specifically about this particular step in the process of writing it down. So in this section, dad emphasizes the importance of writing down our goals. Uh, he talks about using a three by five card for convenience, which is what he always did every summer at Circle A. I remember that was always on the camp purchase list along with seminar notebooks and pencils and things like that was a big giant pack of three by five cards Man, so that all I the totally campers about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would have quite a collection of them so that all the campers would have ample opportunity to write down their goals. So um, I love that for sure. Uh, he talks about the physical act of writing our goals, helping establish those goals in our unconscious mind. And that was a big part of his whole theory about goal setting and his whole teaching about kind of the power of our minds is specifically the power of the unconscious mind to do work beyond what we are aware of. And so as we kind of root these things that we are working towards into our unconscious mind, we find ourselves taking more steps towards the achievement of our goals. We find ourselves believing more um, 
powerfully in our ability to make these goals become reality because we're you we're using that power in our unconscious mind. So he talks about that physical act being one of the things that really roots the goals into our unconscious mind. Um, he also reminds us that our goals should be written in the present positive tense as if they're current realities in the various areas of our lives. Um, and he also invites us to think about setting goals in the multiple areas of our lives. So his goal or his area breakdown would be personal, spiritual, social, physical, mental, and business or vocational or school study, whatever your vocation is. Um, so he teaches us about all of that. He reminds us it, while the three by five card is fun, it doesn't have to be that particular format. It doesn't have to be that size of paper. It doesn't even have to be paper. The point is to have it recorded. The point is the act of recording it. Um, and then he shares some stories with us, of course. Uh, and both of these stories I I'd heard him tell a hundred times. The one story about the guy who, um, <laughs> who, told him to write it down, but didn't necessarily give him any good reasons, just told him to write it down a thousand times until he decided that it was a good idea. And then the other story about the lady who wasn't seeing results in her goal setting. And then he asked her if she'd written them down. And of course, her answer was no. So I love these stories. I love hearing him tell them. Um, but while they're enchanting and sweet, they're also important because <laughs> there are lessons to be learned here. So um, I loved, I loved this little segment from Skip. Yeah, I did too. And uh, you know, they are some uh, classic stories and I love that the, the story of the woman that doesn't write them down. I love the response that he gives to her of then rip the shirt collar off the guy <laughs> in front of you and write them down. I don't care what you write them down on. You got to write them down. Yep. And I think that also lends credence to you can even write them down on your phone. It's okay. Yep. It is it is it is the act of making it personal to you, putting it into those words that that personal relationship with that goal that is what really matters. And um so, if you guys want an excellent app to record those goals in and revisit <laughs> them every morning every night, head on over to Pioneer Circle. Melody, are you ready to get into some questions dealing with this topic? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So question number one, is there some clarity that we could add to how these goals could be written in that, you know, when he's when he's talking about these um, these goals? I mean, obviously, we've been talking for weeks and weeks and weeks on how to conceptualize and, and personalize these goals. But when he's talking about um, making them in the right tense and in the right areas of life. He doesn't really give good um, instruction about the layout um, of the goal. So something like um, the idea of like a smart goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, he did do a lot of teaching about different um important pieces when we write our goals. But I think that this idea of smart goals, which is something pro I don't know how long smart goals have been around, but um, I think dad was teaching about goal setting before they were, but I think he would have loved this idea. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard that acronym, SMART goals essentially stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So <clears throat> I think those are some great uh, defining factors of the goals that we're setting so that we're not just setting things that are pie in the sky crazy. We're not setting things that have no sort of accountability on when we intend to achieve them. We're not setting goals about things that can't be measured that are just kind of ethereal or feeling based. Um, so I think that if we use that acronym, we're bound to be in pretty good shape with how our goals are worded. So I, I use, I use smart goals all the time, um, <clears throat> in my work because it really just does help you kind of hone in on the specificity, the of way that it can be measured, 
the realism surrounding the goal, the relevance, just meaning, you know, is this really furthering my mission in life? And then the time bound part is super, super important too. So I love that. I think that um, last time we talked about seven words. And I think that could be another great little add on to think about here um, or at least making them short. Right. Because if we're going to read them every morning and every night, then we want to just make them really powerful, make each goal pack a punch so that we know exactly what it is that we're working towards. Um, And then he does mention the present positive thing, which I think is I do think it's really important. When I was younger, I kind of wondered. I mean, I know it's the right thing to do because dad said it 500 million times. So I know it's the best best way to set a goal. But I didn't necessarily know why it mattered so much that we say, you know, I have a 4.0 GPA versus I will have a 4.0 GPA. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that the older I get, the more that becomes important to me and the more I see why it's important for everybody, because there's something to having a goal feel like it's present with you, like feel like it's close enough to you to be able to be said in the present rather than it just being something out there in the future, because Especially as we age, I think there comes a point where the future doesn't necessarily feel limitless anymore. And we begin to see the limits of our humanity and our time on this earth and our energy and our um, desires even. And so those limits aren't a bad thing. They're actually a really good thing because it helps us focus on what's most important. So, you know, in my younger years, I might have set goals to travel to every continent and see all these things around the world. Whereas now when I'm thinking about the trips that I want to take with my kids, I'm being really specific. I want to go to this country and see this thing because it's important to me for this reason rather than just, you know, anywhere would be great. Everywhere will be great. And so in the same way, in all the different areas of our lives, I think that there's just something to holding a goal close enough that even though it's not achieved in this moment, we can at least envision the moment that it will be fulfilled and that it will be in our present And it just, it adds a lot of power. So I think that's a really important piece as well. Absolutely. I think as you, as you move closer towards that goal and you get that vision more clearly specified in your mind, you know, you can really see the steps that it's going to take to get you where you want to go. And so conceptualizing in that present positive tense helps with that, that envisioning. And I think that's a, that's a great response and it's super important to getting clarity from your goals. So thank you. Yeah. I think yeah. That's a, that's a really great thing for people to be thinking about when they're writing down their goals. Uh, all right. So question number two, <laughs> dad's write it down story. It's a very funny story where the guy is like, write it down. He's like, but I don't want it. write it down. Well, maybe <laughs> I'll write it down. You know, it's, it, it has a, a comedic effect whenever he does this talk and everybody thinks you know, laughs and thinks it's funny. And, and then he moves on. (laughs) And I always think, but, but wait, there was real, there was good content in your questioning of that man that you even specified, like you didn't really like all of his teachings, but you like this one, but, but the why is so important. So my question is, is there really any tangible benefits that we can identify about this physical practice of writing down those goals. Uh, I know I know dad knew it and he talked about it generally, but in this particular instance, he doesn't really delve into it. So is, is there some clarity that, that you can give to this particular subject uh, to help listeners out there with why they actually need to do this practice? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. I love this question because that also always bothered me about that story, even (laughs) though, you know, I I am glad that he tells it and I'm glad that he taught us to write them down. I think it's, you know, one of the most powerful things that I use in my life every day um, that I learned from dad. But 
yes, there is a lot of science and psychology and all of these things behind this idea of writing down your goals or writing down anything important, really. I mean, I even think of my kids homework and studying for tests, you know, they make flashcards of their material or they make study guides for their tests. And it's not because they don't already have access to the information and it's not because they need busy work. It's because when they take the time to sit down and write this information, it becomes more embedded in their brain. And so it's the same way with writing our goals. Um, I did just a little bit of research on this because I know there's so there's a lot of books that will basically say the same thing in different ways about this. So what, one of the sources I found kind of called it, this the encoding effect. And basically writing things down can significantly improve our memorization of information. So this mm-hmm. encoding effect has like multi layers kind of of how it works. But the first the first piece is active engagement. So when you write something down, you're actively engaging with that material. It's requiring you to think about the content and kind of process it and decide like how you want to represent that content in written form. So like, as we're saying, write down your goals, you're actively engaging. Okay. What are the words that I want to use to represent this goal? And that's step one in this encoding process, right? So then step two is a dual encoding. So writing things down actually creates like a dual encoding of information because not only are you encoding it verbally or like theoretically in your mind as you think about it, but you're also encoding it visually as you see the words written on the paper or on the screen. And so that's also going to strengthen your memory. It's going to strengthen those unconscious ties to the material, right? Then the next layer is motor memory, which that involves the physical act of writing um, your motor skill, your motor skills and your muscle memory, because your brain actually forms connections between the content and the physical act of writing. So it can make recall easier. Right. Um, I remember sometimes dad would even say. He would say, read your goals every morning, every night, every morning, every night. And then he would say, and if you really want to achieve your goal quickly and powerfully, Mm -hmm. write it every morning Mm -hmm. and every night. (laughs) I have never actually tried doing that like for an extended (laughs) period of time. But coming back to this, I almost want to like at least with one or two of my goals, like uh, I want to I think I want to try it and like see because Mm. because there is this brain power that we can tap into and motor memory is part of that as we're actually using our hands to write Mm -hmm. this stuff so then of course the the next step in this encoding process is reinforcement which is basically reviewing what you've written down providing that repeated exposure to the information so that's our read it every morning and every night bit then there's also personalization which basically means when you write something down, you can often personalize your notes by summarizing or highlighting or organizing information in a way that makes sense to you. Um, I'll share a little bit of the way that I personalize goals maybe um, in, a, in a little bit because I, I don't know, I think we all do it a little bit differently. You got to find what works for you, but um, that's an important piece as well. And then you can also have contextual clues. So your written notes can serve as like, a contextual clue, a cue, sorry, that can help trigger memory recall when you revisit them. So essentially when we're reading our goals every morning and every night, like the app that we're using, like even if you're using the every app with the Pioneer Circle and you see that little reminder come up every day, you're already triggering that memory recall before you even get to the goals. Or when you see the little icon of the app on your phone, you're already triggering that memory recall. So we can just do little things to help our brains and our minds and our bodies kind of engage this process that we're asking it to do. So it's pretty cool. And then there's also a retrieval practice with this encoding, which is uh, the process of reviewing your written notes in a form of retrieval practice. So 
basically that would be like remembering your goals and saying them to yourself, even when you're not looking at them. Um, because when you're actively trying to recall that information that you've written, you're strengthening that memory. So that's something that I try to do sometimes when it comes my morning reminder to read my goals. I will actually think about them before I open up my app and actually read them. I will review them in my head. And it's interesting to note the ones that are easier to like recall exactly. And the ones that I'm like, wow, what did I, how did I say that again? Like the words aren't as deeply ingrained. So it's interesting and it's a process and it's a journey, but mm-hmm. our brains are just so powerful. And this is a, it's a great technique to kind of leverage, um, our God given equipment, as dad said, to uh, help us uh, become the people that we're created to be. That's awesome. I love giving even more clarity and context to his teachings and what uh, he's trying to express, even with just that simple act of saying, write it down. And yep. I think that was a awesome <laughs> encapsulation and <laughs> response uh, to the question. Um, I really like, I, I, I do also agree. Maybe it would be fun mm-hmm. to try and rewrite some of these goals because I think even like the relationship that you have with each word you choose yep. in writing the goal could change yep. as you're, as you're, as you're recalling it or developing that, that relationship with what this goal is. Maybe you want to word it just a little bit differently today, but that evolves the goal into something more mm-hmm. specific or, or clear. Um, and then also I, I thought, you know, just you, you hit the nail on the head with having that app develop those healthy habit patterns. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know that on the pioneer circle, we've got a educator on there that is an actual like expert in that field of developing healthy habits through technology. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe we'll get him on the podcast one of these times, but it, there's so much science in why your phone controls you the way it does. And so why don't we harness that yep. uh, in a positive direction for our lives? That just makes all the sense in the world. So I I love this topic. I love talking about this kind of stuff. And I think my next question well, it, it also brings up all my frustrations with this topic. <laughs> <laughs> so question number three, if I'm to summarize the concept that dad has been talking about through these last couple of lessons, uh, here's what I think um, is, is the requirement. We need to write down 10 individual goals surrounding six major areas of life with clear details and specifics pertaining to the goal itself, achieving the goal, the actions and the feelings around achieving that goal. And all of this needs to be written in a present, present positive tense and be brief enough that it can fit onto a single line of a three by five card and then read it every morning and every night <laughs> without running out of time before the, the day is over or the day begins. And I guess the question I have around that is, is, is that really the, the, summary for making goals um is that really what he was, is is trying to encapsulate in that and if so uh then i guess just a, a bonus question to that is how often do we need to take a second and revisit these goals and adjust them or redefine them uh because if we're putting all of this content into these goals i i i think that you know if anyone's actually been listening to these episodes uh, you, I think you'll know where you're going to go with your response, because I think that seven word um, encapsulation of your goal really is a powerful way of containing all of this stuff that he wants into your goal. But I guess my question really is, you know, um, when he says like this takes some time to mm-hmm. just sit down and really develop these things, develop these goals. uh I, I assume he's not joking. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the only example that he puts into this teaching, I think, um, is uh, he says just offhandedly, if you're a student, you don't say I get straight A's in school. You say I am enjoying the coursework 
that has led me to getting straight A's in all of my classes or something to that effect. Uh, and that would still encapsulate all of these different things that we're uh, discussing. Is that is yeah. that the encapsulation I should get out of this? Yeah, I, I do think that's a really good question. In my opinion, this is where the personalization aspect comes in, because I really feel like there's not a one size fits all approach. I think that dad teaches this one size fits all approach because it's a starting place. Like it's a good approach. This absolutely can work, does work as far as like 10 10 of individual goals, six major areas of life, details and the whys and the actions and the feelings and the present positive tense and the three by five card. Like that is one strategy for sure. Um, but I do think that there is some power in personalizing a technique that works for you. So, I mean, I can just share briefly mine because I think if I do, you'll see the parts that are definitely from dad and then the parts that I just made up on my own because it's what works for me. And I've been doing this for a while and I figured out, you know, what works great for me. So I do set 10 goals at the beginning of every year that I do it as an annual thing. So my goals are all time bound to that calendar year. <clears throat> now, obviously I have other goals in and out of that, but as far as like my I'm practicing what dad taught me, like that this is how I do it. So I set my goals at the beginning of every year. I put them into my phone. I read them every morning and every night. I make sure that there's at least one from these six major areas. And then I have some other, my work life is kind of divergent into several categories. So I have one from each category of my work life, which works out to 10, which is great. Um, so I have those. And I read them every morning and every night. And I have my app remind me to do that. In addition, so those are my big goals for the year. Then in addition, I have my month monthly on the first day of every month. I, I have what I call my brain map, which is essentially my grand to-do list um, for every category of my life. And so I revisit that list and I choose the things from that list that I intend to accomplish that month. So that the, that goal setting is more strategic and in my control because it's more of a to-do list type of goals than it is the bigger picture. Some of these things are not in my control and the bigger picture why type of stuff. So I do that every month. And then this is a new addition for this year. I have a very epic and amazing spreadsheet where I track my progress on all of my big goals. So like I keep track of every book that I'm reading. I keep track of each step. Like one of my goals for this year was to launch the Circle A Summit, the Reflections Podcast and the Pioneer Circle. So that was the goal. So then on the spreadsheet, I'm keeping track of all of the steps towards that. So it helps me to be able to look back at the end of the year and see what progress I did make, what progress I didn't make, what goals I did achieve, what goals I want to revisit. And it just, I, I, it, it keeps me accountable. It keeps me on track and it keeps me aware that I am making progress, even when it doesn't necessarily feel like it. So that's the personalization part for me. I don't think everyone should follow my system. Like, <laughs> If I tried to write a book that explained my personal system, I feel like people would just burn it and be like, this is way too complicated. There's no way I'm doing this, which is why I think dad's system is awesome, because even though it is complex and like you said, it does take some time, it is approachable. I mean, anybody can do exactly what he says. But I think as we start the process, we find, you know, little nuances and little things that are going to work best for our individual selves. I also want to say that there is a lot of current teaching around the idea that we can only focus on, and again, this matters on the expert. Some experts say we can only focus on three big goals at a time. Some experts say we can only focus on two big goals at a time. Some experts say we can only focus on one. So with when we start people in the pioneer circle, 
we actually encourage them to start with three. Start with three big goals that you're going to work on because 10 can feel a little bit overwhelming to people. Um, So if 10 feels overwhelming to you, I would absolutely recommend starting with three because it doesn't have to be 10 for the year. It could be one for the month. It could be three for the year. It could be whatever works for you. There's no, you know, right or wrong in this. There's more what's going to keep you motivated, what's going to keep you moving forward. So that's a lot of like personal stuff. I don't know how well it answers your question. Um, But in my mind, well, well, I'll say one more thing. I do think the seven words thing is really powerful. And I think that when we can get them down to that few words, um, it doesn't take as much revisiting. We've kind of, we've done the work. We've done all of the background. Why, how, what? We've done all of the dreaming. We've done all the thinking about our emotions and our actions, and we can get it down to seven words. And all of the work that we're doing to get it there is moving us towards the goal. Because all of that work is that process that we talked about of the Um, encoding effect that's putting it in our minds and putting it into our realities. So um, I do think that that's a really, really awesome way to approach it. Awesome. Yeah, I, I definitely uh, think that fully uh, answers my question. And I think that, um, yeah, the, the fact of the matter is you only have so much time to stand in front of a mirror. And so spacing it out into uh, different categories or different different ways of attacking those goals or, or uh, conceptualizing your goals for the year or when to refocus or when to have the right kind of to-do lists and things like that. Like um, I think that's a very, it's, it's, it's definitely an intimidating thing to uh, take on all of that at once, but I can see the pathway from moving from three goals at a time to having a, a, a well-structured, uh, a well-structured, I want to say attack, but a well-structured system for really attaining the goals that you have for your life. Yep. And I think that was a, a great encapsulation of that. So thank you very much. I don't think there are many people out there that um, have the discipline that you do towards mapping out your mind or mapping out your <laughs> your pathways for the year. So I think it's always good to... Uh, hear from you on this subject. So thank you, Melody, for your responses. I think they were awesome. And I think everyone got a lot out of it. I know I did. Uh, Are there any closing thoughts on this subject that you wanted to touch on before we uh, leave our audience for this week? Mm, I mean, I, I think my closing thought is just an encouragement for people to have just grace and joy when they're approaching this this work because I think it can feel a little bit overwhelming or Mm -hmm. I think it can feel a little bit like not joyful if we're not careful. And so my encouragement would just be like, do, do the parts of this that bring joy and energy into your growth and achievement. And then the rest will follow from there. So that's, that's my closing thought for this week. It's been super fun to discuss and I look forward to the next one. Awesome. Well, thank you. And thank you all for joining us on this journey with the Reflections cast. And remember that your support means everything to us. So if you enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to hit that like button on the video or write us a review on your podcast feed or leave us a voicemail over on Spotify. And please share this episode with anyone that you think could benefit from our discussion, friends, family, whoever you think. We believe in you and we are committed to helping you thrive on your journey of discovering all you were created to be. Until next time, keep reflecting, keep growing and pass it on.